Welcome to Touched and Empowered, a show created to empower individuals to value their lives by hosting think tank discussions that will inspire positive action. Touched and Empowered with Katie and Ace starts now. Welcome everyone to this week's Touch to Empowered, where we empower individuals to value their lives by hosting think tank discussions that inspire positive action. I'm here with the wonderful Katie Miller. Oh, and, we are, mwah! <laughs> and we are both transformational coaches on this journey to empower others to really value their lives. There's been so many upgrades. I've been receiving so many great things and I've been so grateful for it all. Like I got new furniture. Can you tell this chair is awesome? <laughs> it is a cute yellow. Yes. I never thought I'd care much for the yellow furniture, but every now and then I find a piece that's cute. So I, I really actually like it. I love that. Um, another thing is I got a new, like people are just showering new furniture on me. <laughs> and uh, and free, by the way. So like I got this chair, I got a bed frame, I got a couch. Like it was just it was interesting because what really started the chain reaction of receiving free furniture was you know, doing some shadow work and really letting go of any anger or feelings of like resentment that I've had stored and built up. Um, and like, just not realizing it was there, you know? Yeah. Cause a lot of times we have it for so long. We don't realize that it is external. Yeah, we're like, we're normalizing it. And then we're just right. soaking it in and compartmentalizing it and putting it in a space. I don't know where that accent came from. Like all deep underneath. <laughs> just deep underneath it all. And like, it's, it's interesting because like I did a Reiki session um, about a week or two ago and like anything that I was storing came up to be healed. And it was that I was storing that I wasn't really understanding. And like, you know, when you're just so angry sometimes and you're, you're in this constant state of anger sometimes because things are hitting you, you're angry at the person that's like making the circumstances worse. You're just, just angry at everything. And then when you really do the shadow work to understand, like, you don't have to feel like that all the time. There are things to be released and it does take strength to release them. Don't get me wrong. It really takes a lot of strength to let go of something that really pained you. And then, you know, once you detach from it, you kind of feel sore a little bit for a while. Yeah. Yes. And anytime you are shifting energy around your emotions, because your emotions is exactly that energy in motion. I, we feel it in our bodies every time we process something, whether it be the constricting of our throat because we're choking up when we cry. I mean, there's a reason why these words are describing the emotions when we go through them. And I think that it is worth acknowledging when someone goes through a process that they take the time to recover afterwards, drink water, get extra sleep, eat, journal, you know, do the things that you need to do to take care of you because otherwise you're not going to be able to benefit from everything that you just let go of and went through. Yeah. Yeah. And like receive it. Like I, I think so. I, t I sold two programs this week. I'm like really grateful for those. So I, um, I created this accelerator program because remember last week when we were just like, well, what did you do? You, you were like the first thing at the seat. Like, wow, what happened? You were was, glowing, you were popping, you were like, I am here, everybody see me. I think fantastic. I'm still, thank you. I'm, I think I'm still in this flow. Yes, you were still glowing, darling. Yes. All right. <laughs> and the, the voice is getting louder because my throat chakra is definitely recovering. <laughs> um, but what was really interesting was like, as I was going through that uh, accelerator program, I created my own accelerator program where instead of the three weeks where I was like really healing the heck out of myself and recovering and just getting back on my feet, I also developed a six week um, program so that you don't do it in the three weeks that I did, by the way, that was, it was pretty intense. Yeah. There was a, there's a marathon, there's a marathon and then there's slow and steady. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And I went full, like 
I'm tired of all of this pain and feeling blocked from my fortune and just, ah, you know, I was, I was really like, I was really suffering and I was just like, I don't, I don't know what's wrong, but I want to freaking heal. So we're going to do it. And I did. So essentially the three week program that I created <laughs> to a six week program, I sold two of them because apparently people saw the results and were like, what did you do? Yeah. Me like six months. Like, I'm, I'm like, no, no, it's, it's six weeks. Do you want, I mean, you could do six months, but it's a lot more expensive. Do you want to do the, the accelerate? And they were like, yeah, yeah, sign me up. I'm ready. I'm ready to up level. And there you go. Right. Yeah. And like, since then, um, you know, we'll, we'll talk about my clients, but let, let's talk about the, week Just or the process of up leveling. Yeah. The process of up, uh, up leveling comes with, you have to let go of, of things. Um, anything that doesn't serve you anymore. Um, for instance, I didn't need the old chair mm -hmm. anymore. I could let it go and I got this one. Um, we're going to use that as a basic metaphor. Now let's think about additional energetic parts of that. Um, we don't need the anger anymore. We can let it go. We can bring in a different type of energy. We don't need to hold on to those experiences, trauma. We can let them go. I mean, don't get me wrong. You should understand it served you. There is a lesson there and the anger actually served you. We should never negate our emotions on that. There was a reason behind it that you can take with you into the next step of the journey. And that I think is a lesson that a lot of us forget because unfortunately, at least in my case, anytime there was hurt, and I will say done to me, mm -hmm. it was easy to put blame. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually- And that's not serving. Blame actually does something fascinating. It is the fastest way to create that anger inside yourself and hold it actually, which I, I didn't really get. And I didn't understand that I was blaming either. Sometimes when you're blaming the outside sources, you're forgetting like your power and then you're giving any negativity that you think is outside of yourself power and then depleting your own. You're pretty much handing over an emotional remote control to the other person. Yeah. yeah. You're relinquishing that power, that control that you have of yourself to somebody else and it's not that we're doing it intentionally it's that we didn't learn any different growing up yeah exactly we we it was like there's a bunch of different um modalities of living since we were a child from generation to generation and i believe over the millennia we've we've taken on a different type of confusing paradigm <laughs> That feels completely wrong <laughs> to what's natural and what feels, you know, a little bit, you know, like it feels like we should be doing X, but we're doing the complete opposite because there's just all this odd confusion or odd discrepancies that have been put in place um, for whatever reason. Well, there, there's also the pendulum swing. Mm -hmm. There, There's the way that for example, I have noticed there was the way that I was raised. And then there are the way, there's the way that I raised my son, which is very different from the way that I was raised. But I have seen where individuals have gone to the far extreme of the way how they were raised. I used to do it's that. Like they're going from one extreme to the other. From the helicopter parent to the abandoned parent or vice versa. Yeah, I mean, it's and it's not that there's anything wrong with it from one standpoint, because we want to make sure that our kids have everything that we were lacking. But one of the things that I learned <laughs> that I actually called my husband out on a lot of mm -hmm. is he wanted to wrap our child in bubble wrap. No playing outside without being supervised. I'm sorry. Um, kids are allowed to play on a playground without being watched 24-7. Yeah. 
that's so nice. I wasn't allowed to like go over other kids' houses for play dates unless my parents really knew them. I was like, I, I, I wasn't allowed to go to do sleepovers except for maybe like three in my life. Like my parents were very, very careful of me because there were all these horrors from news sharing how like they're- Oh my God, I slept over at people's houses that my mom's like, okay, as long as I have a phone number so I can call the parents, go ahead. Yeah, no, that didn't, that didn't happen. To me. You, know, you know what, my, my- That's excuse- showing my age right there. <laughs> oh, that's fun. That's, that's great. I'm like, my, my eh, you know, we, we also had the telephone book too, but we couldn't. It, it's just interesting. It's like immigrant generation family parents, you know, they're watching the news and they're learning about America yes. through news. And that is very different than being quote unquote middle class America for generations, mm, mm-hmm. which is pretty much what I qualify as because I like to poke fun. I'm going to poke fun of my mom at this. My mom is the result of two country songs. Oh, coal miner's daughter and the son of a preacher man. Oh, okay. That's because my great granddad was a preacher and my great grandfather was a coal miner. Mm -hmm. You know, and of course, that was all before World War One and Two. So there's the Depression and everything else in there, too. So I've got that whole lineage of family dynamics because being raised in a religious household is completely different than being raised in a working man's household. Kind of got a fusion of both there in a different way, but yeah, I understand exactly what you're talking about. (laughs) Which is good because I feel like I have absolutely no authority on what I'm talking about right now because I didn't live in either one of those households. (laughs) I, I, it's, it's really interesting. So my, my mother and my father to relate to what you're saying, like that, you know, they grew up, Roman Catholic Filipino religious to an extent you know my mom still goes to church yeah Mm -hmm. I respect it um I ended up becoming Nitrin Buddhist uh, and I chant with SGI so you know a little different um but I think when it came to religion and um that part of life Mm -hmm. it really does um create an environment in your home that attunes to those values. Like for instance, Catholicism, you don't really divorce, right? Makes sense. Yeah. So funny. All right. I got to say this. Based on what I know of the religion, that makes sense. Yeah. They don't, they don't really divorce. People don't normally divorce. So like, it's like long standing relationships, which I found out. So most of the kids that are born around my birth year, 92. Uh, born in the 90s. Yeah, the 90s kids here. Um, 50% of parents in of, of like the kids for my generation uh, mm-hmm. were divorced. Well, I, mean, I look at it this way. I was born in the 80s and my mom was divorced twice. Well, it, so, it, I mean, more power to her. I yeah. She did what was necessary for her and what was right for her based on the information she had at that point in time in her life. See, it was it, here. It was common. And like, so I'm like, yeah. I wanted to think step by step here. Yes. So it now- is, it, our generation, but I think between the 80s and 90s was when it became very common Yes, for that to be normal yeah. and to be in a relationship for more than 10 years or to be married for more than 10 years was kind of the oddball thing yeah and I didn't know that so my sisters and my parents you know well except for one of my sisters um uh, two of my sisters have sustained their marriage um funny enough Roman Catholic background families the one that didn't not as much um and then my dating pool (laughs) <laughs> I found that you know the amongst the people that I've dated appreciate all of you by the way thank you so much for all the lessons um 
they like one of them I remember he also came from he was Irish he came from a Roman Catholic background as well and the way that we would build the stability for our relationship funny enough very similar Mm -hmm. values aligned Um, we both understood how to create a study foundation very study foundation and we also understood like okay do our do our our, um do our visions of our lives match yes and when we got to that conversation you know that's when that's when we couldn't move forward but what I also but I what I did understand is like it really comes down to like those values and understanding and challenging those values whenever you're going through an up level or you're going through a process of letting go and bringing in new, right? One, it's fucking terrifying. I'm going to say that right now. Yes. It is absolutely terrifying. Anybody that I know who has up-leveled and up-leveled and up-leveled, they've had the courage to go through all the upheavals, all the tower moments, all of the fun things of crumble, arrange, build, crumble, arrange, build, and challenge the new ideas, the new beliefs, challenge old beliefs. Are they really sturdy? And defining and refining who they are that way. Um, not everyone does that. A lot of people plateau at 25. They don't need to go through the tower moments anymore. They're good at 25. Then there's the 30s. Then there's the people that are in their that have in their like mid 40s and whatnot that like they never had to go through it until something hit where their mission was like, no, we really need you. <laughs> get yeah here's all the stuff let's let's rebuild everything yeah, you'll be the, there is the there's two i'm coming up with two different terms for that part of it that i have looking back and i'm saying looking back because i'm looking at friends from when i went to high school and people who graduated high school before i did mm-hmm. it's the midlife crisis And it could be anything from, okay, we are quitting our corporate job and deciding to do entrepreneurship and starting our own business with no idea what the heck we're doing other than the fact that we love to dance. And she is a fantastic dance instructor now and has a great growing business. Good for her. Very proud of her. And then there, you know, there are other kinds of midlife crises that happen. Uh, We always joke about buying new cars (laughs) because that was something that was really popular in the 80s you have a midlife crisis you buy a new car um (laughs) okay all right yeah well when people come to LA that one just that (laughs) that just well okay on the east coast where I live in Maryland there's many midlife crises buy a car (laughs) I guess yeah but it it's Either, you know, it feels like you're going through a midlife crisis or someone sees this big change in you and they assume you're in crisis. Or because, you know, oh, all this stuff is going on around with you. What's wrong? Instead of, oh, all this stuff is going on with you. That's fantastic. You're growing. You're evolving. You know, so you have that side of it. And then you have the people who you kind of talk with and you've, up leveled and they look at you and like what the hell happened yeah I don't know you anymore what changed well I got that one a lot on Tuesday and that one is kind of hard to explain because you can't explain to somebody oh I did a self-development class I did some intuition training I did some self-healing and let go of a whole bunch of crap and then they look at you like oh um yeah you have three heads now and you're very woo (laughs) <laughs> um, I, I'm assuming this is the East Coast because over here, like, yeah, well, I'm I'm assuming it's East Coast only because that was the reaction I got. Okay, I got I got the reaction as to what happened to the being the normal, steady, dependent rock that we could always count on to you being so airy and flighty and hmm, not quite sure what you're on, but you probably shouldn't be on it anymore. <laughs> Because happy isn't normal anymore. Apparently, happy's not normal anymore. Oh, 
that's sad. Okay, that's but that's so true. So like over here, it, for instance, I uh, on Tuesday I, I decided to like shock my results coach. <laughs> Like I didn't go to class last week. My my results coach, uh, John Tallarico, by the way, we will put his information in the in the. Show in notes. The, yes, thank you. You're welcome. Because, yes, absolutely excellent results coach. He helps particularly people break out of their poverty mindset, which is beautiful. No judgment whatsoever. Wow. He really does help you with that. With That's a, a big six, one. Yeah, it's huge. So it's a six month program and he, he really just coaches you through it. Um, and that's what I was doing for a good six months. And so I, all the upheavals and changes, because all of the thoughts had been challenged and destroyed. Um, <laughs> but essentially I, um, you know, I, I wasn't on the meeting about for like two weeks during my three week healing process. And he's like, okay, so it could come back to class. I'm like, okay. And there's a few victories I want to share with you. Yeah. And I'm like, like so excited. <laughs> <laughs> the plot thickens. <laughs> right? He hasn't seen me. So I'm like, so I get there and he just goes, what, 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 what happened to you? <laughs> and I was like, I created my healing program. Look, it has results. He's like, yeah, you, yeah, it was six months. Let's let me put that. That's amazing. And it was, it really comes down to it's sure woo. I think it really does come down to letting go of all the pain because I had so much pain stored in my body. And a lot of it, you know, sometimes you can't do it on your own. Um, yes. There is a TV show called Avatar Legend of Korra. On it was on Nickelodeon. It's on Netflix. Oh, okay. Name's familiar now. Yes, the first, the first season, uh, the first um series. This is like a, a this is this uh, the the next Avatar after Aang. Yep. Um. So in this series, it's kind of interesting because they actually talk about trauma being stored in the body. Korra, it just went through everything at an older age and just is like not able to feel any happiness or joy because all of her chakras are blocked with all this negative energy that's been stored in her body and even when somebody tried to help release it with her she she couldn't it was too painful to redo yeah, yeah. and katie here is one of the first healers that helped me go through that <laughs> um without having to re-traumatize me which was beautiful and then I'm still else. like ecstatic that that worked as seamlessly as it did. And I might have guided you through that process, but that was all you doing the work, honey. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Like that. We were a little alarmed during it. We can, we can be transparent here. There, there was a lot of anger. <laughs> Like just there, there, like, there was I, I will admit I actually saw the anger and it's not I think you're the only client I've worked with that actually should I've seen a lot of calm I've seen a lot of tears I've seen a lot of terrified anxiety going into oh my god relief it's gone you're the only one that's ever exposed anger during wow. a session but I knew that once you got it out, it would be gone. Yeah, thank you. It was true. And then mm -hmm. there was like, there was still a lot. N not not as much as I expected, but like you know when you when you release the plug out of the, then 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 the rest has to kind of like lodge out. Yeah, you you pull the plug for the drain. And it goes down, and then all of a sudden you get that air bubble that pops, and then all of a sudden it drains all at once. Exactly. And then additionally, with that came with, all right, now we gotta realign your chakras, clear out some shit. Let's get rid of the, let's cord cut a lot. <laughs> let's um. Additionally, uh, you know, I my I I have a practice of um of candle work, of course. Katie has beautiful candle work. I love your candle work. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then additionally, um, motivational coaching as well. 
So we had that going on. I did some brain spotting. Highly recommend as well. Um, apparently that's not, that's not easy. Did you know that? After watching the video that um, Deidre mm. sent to me, she sent me a video mm. about what brain spotting was. And watching that, I was like, oh, that's like um, brain surgery without the scalpel. Yeah, you do the nice version of that. <laughs> yeah, I, my, my version's a lot gentler. <laughs> Same results. If you want it done quickly and like, all done in one session where you never have to do it again, brain spotting is probably your way to go. That, now. If you want a little bit more hand holding, and like, and come see me. <laughs> I had no idea. So I actually went into a lift with this, um, with uh, he, this, the driver for, for one of my lift rides, he was like a veteran who saw war. And I told him I did brain spotting. He was like, you did brain spotting? Oh, I couldn't do it. I was like, you couldn't, what? He was like, it was so intense. I couldn't, I was like, he's like, you're really tough. Like he was telling me, this guy was a veteran, <laughs> went to war, like actually saw, like one of his best friends died next to him. Like wow. that. And I told him how I went through like 45 minutes of just releasing all of this scar tissued um trauma essentially mm -hmm. I kid you not it was like 28 sessions of talk therapy in 45 minutes of just like rip out everything that, that like has halted you because you haven't been able to let go of the memories and it is a very effective method it's and, incredible. and I am going to be reaching out to Deidre because I want to experience it just so then that way I can give a better okay a versus b you know, better comparison. I'm, I, I highly recommend everyone try both because there are times when I will go to Katie. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to know that what I do is just as effective, just not as time compaction. Yeah. And I, I honestly think like, so for, for recent experiences, for experiences that have happened within a year or la or or you know maybe two years but not I would I would go to Katie 100 percent for all of this the the complex PTSD underneath everything that wasn't just in that one spot with Katie I might have to challenge you on that one oh okay and, and the reason is because I recently had a client that on his very first session we did resolution and we for lack of a better term took off the safety belt we took off the training wheels. We took off the bubble wrap, the helmet. I mean, we went full blown deep, deep dive in. Mm -hmm. Apparently we resolved all of the trauma res revolving around his mother. Oh, that's beautiful. We're talking 58 years Okay, I gone. <laughs> Three days later, I was on a conversation with him and he told me that he could actually think of his mom and not flinch. See, that is beautiful. Okay. I and didn't, I'm like, whoa, he did a lot of work. I just got it. <laughs> yeah. And the thing is like, I think the reason, all right. So I apologize. I, no, I was, it's okay. Thank you. I, I just wanted to, you know, clear the air. My experience with Katie was with something that was traumatizing and decent. Yes. Right? Because so, that's what we chose to work with. Yes. Exactly. And that was actually halting a lot of the entirety of what I needed to heal. Because your wise, intuitive, higher self said that's what you needed to work with with me. With exactly. him, his wise, intuitive, higher self said that I will hold his hand through the worst of the worst and mm. get him through it. That's so beautiful. he was able to resolve it. So it's not what I say we need to work with. It's what my client says we need to work with. Yes. And not even what they say, it's what their subconscious, their wise, intuitive, higher self, their whatever source or whatever power they believe in says they're supposed to work with. And this is why I love working with intuitives. I feel like I'm like, <laughs> Yes, I'm part of the tribe, a part yeah. of the family. Oh, 100%, yeah. This collective that we've created, we're creating. We're right? creating. And we are meeting some amazing people. 
uh, who just have some amazing gifts. And I truly believe that there is no one true way to do anything. Agreed. And genuine, like just genuine, good-hearted healers. These are the people with integrity that have compassion and have the courage to heal people through what they're going through. It takes a lot of courage because to an extent, the person must have gone through something similar. Uh, that's what I've been noticing as a coach, that I can hold space for my clients who have gone through what I've gone through. And if it wasn't for the fact that we did the very accelerated healing process of that, <laughs> um, I wouldn't have been able to close two clients this week, which is pretty amazing. Which I still think is absolutely fantastic you were able to do that because I know before we started this podcast, you were like, I don't know. I don't know. But look, evidence. Yeah. We yeah. got evidence. Thank you. <laughs> and like another, I, another thing is like, I needed confidence in my packages, right? So what better confidence than to go through it and know it very well that it works. Yes. Um, and I needed to go through that in order for me to have the confidence behind it. So, you know, for my healing accelerator program, it is $5,555. I love the numerical magic in that. Thank you very much. And if anyone understands what 555 means, ah, that means you are on the road to the biggest life changes of your life. It is one of those numbers that helps move us forward. Especially during the most painful times. It, it's the healing after the worst of the hurt. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what that program <laughs> That's exactly what that program is for. And funny enough, so the, the client that I was working with, um, you know, he he was going through some financial struggles. Um like he was mentioned, he mentioned to me, like he was squatting in a house and like, he didn't know if he, he had this much on a credit card. And I just went, I will work with you. We'll do them in installments. One, two, that means we have to work on your money mindset. Yep. So I did some additional coaching on that. He just got a check in the mail today. <laughs> when yesterday he was like, I don't know, I'm going to make any of the payments. And I was just like, well, you're doing the work. And then also we're going to, uh, I'll give you an extra energy boost. So let's see how that goes. Got to check in the, in the mail for like a grand today. I was like, yeah. I love when money randomly shows up. Oh yeah. For anyone watching, this is one of those, um, I actually have this in my subscription for Instagram. So if you subscribe to me, you can have access to this affirmation on loop by Bob Proctor. I am so happy and grateful now that money flows to me in increasing quantities through multiple sources on a continuous basis and allow that to continue and grow and grow. And I don't remember hearing that on your Instagram. So needless to say, I need to catch up. And this is actually what I wanted to talk to Katie about too. So my Instagram has two parts. There's the part that's public and free. And then there's the subscriber part. So if you actually subscribe to my Instagram for, uh, on a monthly basis for five bucks, it's not like, I'm not putting like 30 bucks in there. <laughs> um, for $5, you get access to these videos on loop and some of these podcast videos. Uh, we'll be donating a dollar per subscriber to the Teen Suicide Prevention Society. Aww. Thank you, darling. You're welcome. I feel like without the content from these podcasts, everything else would just be like, well, oh. <laughs> if nothing else, I want to picture the screenshot of your face. Go, oh. <laughs> that just opens and warms my heart with gratitude because we have both been there and we have both gone through our own process in raising awareness and helping people build a buffer between themselves and a ledge that they may not even know that they're standing next to. And the fact that both of us, I mean, I'm 
equally excited and grateful because it is my family's nonprofit, the Teen Suicide Prevention Society. You know, but the fact that you have helped support it in so many ways that this is just extra, extra su support that I don't even, I can't even talk right now. I am, bleh. and yes, that does not need to be cut out. I'm talking about, I am so grateful. I can't get the words out of my mouth right now. I'm so grateful to be working with you. And it, yes, it's like, I couldn't have asked to be aligned with a better nonprofit in regards to my mission and supporting people that have gone through those mental health challenges and creating a way to empower people earlier so that they don't even have those thoughts moving forward. That is such a beautiful, beautiful mission and a vision that I want to support and help manifest into reality. And I am ever so grateful that you are here to help us because as we joke about me being older, you know, you know things on how to connect on social media and Instagram and stuff that I have got no clue on. And I am perfectly okay with saying the fact that I have no clue, but I'm learning. Yay. And that's all that matters is I'm learning and I'm moving forward. So anyone who actually finds the Teen Suicide Prevention Society on Instagram will see that we're actually posting weekly now. Yay, I figured it out. Thank you for joining us. We hope that the discussion today will inspire you to take positive action in your life. Until next week, be empowered.